I read you guys' questions, and I'm sure that many more of you have the same one. Now that we've gathered all this data using our technology, we have tons of notes and a process in place to actually create a new pitch, but in the end, what are we actually looking for to take what we have here onto the mound? That's the topic of today's video, how I analyze pitches and some different ways to implement changes. So stick around, this is going to be one you're not going to want to miss. Welcome to the Pitch Design Lab. We covered in the last video the four-step process of pitch design, and if you haven't seen that video yet, I'd suggest that you check it out. It provides you all with a good base of knowledge on what this process really entails. But in today's video, we're going to be focusing on the third step in that process, the implementation of all our hard work. Today in the Pitch Design Lab, we're going to learn how to compress all those numbers and ideas we talked about in the last video into something usable, a star pitch. And we're going to do that by becoming a machine at analyzing some very specific information. Let's jump into it. There are three things an athlete can manipulate that affect a pitch's movement profile. So those are the three things you should focus on during a pitch design session. These three things are each pitch's velocity, how fast it is, how each pitch spins, and their arm slot throughout all their different pitches. Let's cover what each of those things mean to me. Starting with each pitch's velocities. Now, there's the obvious part here where the harder you throw, the better you will be. Think about it. If you see two pitches, we'll say a slider, with identical movement patterns, but one's at 80 miles an hour and the other one's thrown at 85, the pitch thrown at 85 is going to see better results. But there's also a not so obvious portion of manipulating velocities that you should take into account during a pitch design session. We've talked about this pitch movement chart quite a bit, but really there's another aspect that you shouldn't forget, and that's the Z direction. That's going to be each pitch's velocities. Just as you want separation here between your pitch's vertical and horizontal break, you want the same separation between your pitch's different speeds. Now, if we're going to go by the book here, here's a quick guide on how each pitch should differ from a pitcher's fastball. Your fastball is going to be thrown as hard as you can. That one's pretty obvious. In general, your cutter should be thrown 4 to 6 mile an hour slower than your fastball. Your slider should be thrown 8 to 10 miles per hour slower than your fastball. Your changeup. 8 to 12 miles per hour slower. Then a slurve should be thrown 11 to 13 miles per hour slower. And finally, your curveball should be thrown 14 to 18 miles per hour slower. Take a look at any successful pitcher's arsenal and check these categories for yourself. For the most part, they'll fall along these lines. Next, let's talk about spin. And when I say spin, I'm referring to two different things here a pitch's spin rate, and its spin axis. I did a video on what this is and how it affects pitch movement earlier on the channel, so if you need an explanation on that, check it out in the description down below. This video is just going to be about how to manipulate these pitches during these sessions. This combination is really where the work with the technology comes in. Once you have determined how you would like your pitch to move, you need to manipulate these factors to actually make it happen. Here you have to put on your thinking cap and imagine what different grips, pressure points, hand and wrist positioning will give you the outcome you desire. How would this come off of the hand and what if we rotated the ball like this? And then you have to try to come up with a way to get the athlete to actually do them. To do this, you often have to try a ton of different cues to get the results you want. And really, this portion is the majority of the pitch design process, making the pitch move the way you want it to. A cue that works with one athlete also may do the opposite to another, so there isn't really a secret formula for success in this area. In the end, it's really just a lot of trial and error, and like I said in the last video, this takes a lot of time. And lastly, let's talk about arm slot. This is where my video on tunneling really comes into play. Like I said there, if you have three wicked pitches, but your body tells the hitter what's coming before the ball is even released, then there's no point in designing a new pitch. 
my recommendation to you is to work on matching your fastball release to the release point you have on your breaking balls because the difference in the movement profile on your fastball when you make this change will be a lot less dramatic than if you were trying to change your breaking ball arm slot. A quick check for all of this is to take a video of each pitch and you could use an expensive camera or even just use your phone and place it somewhere behind you. Then you can overlay those videos and see how different those arm slots really are. Another helpful tip here is to get into the driveline plyo care program. This will help create efficient body movements in order to replicate your delivery more consistently. Here's a free introduction to a plan that I found on the internet in a link down below. This has all just been my experience with pitch design, talking about the factors I believe are most important when looking at pitch data to create a pitcher's arsenal. Now that we've gone over all the basics, maybe in my next video I'll walk you through an example of a pitch design process I've done in the past. Leave a comment down below if you'd like to see that. Then, a special thanks to Corey for the inspiration for this video. I try to read and respond to every comment I get, and if you have a good idea, then it may be featured in a future video, so keep them coming. Leave a like if you learned anything, or just want to help support the channel, I really appreciate it. Comment any questions or suggestions for a future video down below, and subscribe for more weekly baseball animations posted every Tuesday.